All right, what's up, y'all? It's like a fan here. As I'm about to tell today's video, we're here to rank all the finishing badges and tiers in NBA 2K24. So, what I want to say first and foremost before we get into this video, a lot to do with this tier list is going to be biased very heavily toward the layup style of this game. Layups are really key right now, and they're winning very, very hard in terms of comparing dunks to layups. And to start us off with the reason for that, most particularly, we have Precision Dunker starting off in the F tier. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut over to my Twitter video that I recorded and it does a really good job at explaining why I'm putting Precision Dunker in the F tier, but to make a long story short, it doesn't work. It doesn't actually function in the game. I'm sure you guys have been able to tell this if you're a slasher that's played the game now through the couple, like about a week or two that we've had the access to the game. and. It's, it's really disappointing to see, but I'm going to cut to that real quick, and then if you want to skip it, it's only going to be like about a minute or a minute and a half, and we'll get right back to the tier list after that. Go ahead and take a look at this. We have the same two players. I copied them over. They're the same height, weight, wingspan, the same overall, same attributes, everything is all the exact same, except one has precision dunker and the other does not. So let's go ahead and let you be the judge and let you assume who has precision dunker, who doesn't. So player number one right here, you're going to go ahead and see, we're going to go for a meter dunk. Pretty small meter. I'm on Hall of Fame difficulty, so it kind of just, you know, looks like that as is, and that's how it always will be. And I did a different test of this on Pro. It looked the exact same as far as, like, the discrepancy in the dunk meters. But anyway, go ahead and pan over to player number 23 right here. And let me let me just resume and show you that, again, one's labeled number 20, 23, the other's labeled number one. So one of them has precision dunker, the other does not. Can you take a guess at who does and who doesn't? And let me just tell you the honest answer is that no, you can't tell it because it looks the exact same on both players, bro. <laughs> so player number one, 93 driving dunk. Player number 23, 93 driving dunk. The exact same. Well, guess what? So this player right here doesn't have precision dunker. This one has it on Hall of Fame. And again, it looks the exact same. It's no different, bro. Again, I'm going to show this one more time. Like <laughs> player 23 does not have precision. Let's see if you're you know, let's see if it's a placebo and you just think that it looks different just because you're seeing it differently. So there's no precision dunker and here's Hall of Fame. <laughs> Again, it, it looks literally the exact same. Unbelievable. Like that doesn't look any different, bro. It's no difference in size at all. All right. Now I'm going to warn you guys a lot to do with what I'm going to say in this video is going to sound like complaining because obviously it's me who has been very biased toward the dunking style of the game rather than layups or mashing or inside like post scoring type stuff like that ever. But that's not going to stop me from putting these badges where they belong in today's video. That has never been the case and it never will. So as far as where precision dunker is again, that's F tier. We already just explained that. So moving along into the rest of the video, I hope you all enjoy. And if you do, feel free to drop a like, sub, new turn on notice, all good stuff. And like always, try this one at 2000 likes. So next up, we have masher. Masher is going to be in the C tier. I will say as far as like standing layups, they're also pretty down bad in this game. Like if you're talking driving lays or standing dunks, those two are looking really, really good in this game. <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy. And then the standing layups and the driving dunks are pretty down bad. So masher is a C tier in my opinion, also for the reason of it's very hard to justify making a center who's above seven foot in this game. In my opinion, seven ones are like doable. 7-2 is really pushing it, if you ask me, and 7-3 is extremely slow. Like, the speed loss that you're going to have between a 7-3 and a 7-2 and down to 7-1, I've already showcased this. It's 6 speed for every single height, and then down from 7 foot to 6-11 is only a loss of 2 speed, and it continues to kind of be like that throughout the rest of the course of the game. So, being a tall big is pretty hard to do in this game, and subsequently off that, masher is very hard to see effectiveness of, just because you don't see, like... A discrepancy in big man height as much as you would in years past generally you're looking at seven footer all the way down to maybe six eight and in which case yeah seven footers can mash the six eights but even for that matter the contested mashing quote unquote that we call it for the reason of it's you know a masher badge and you're mashing in the paint off this off the close shots it's not functionally very good in this game if you ask me so that's why we have master in the seats here and moving along into the next badge we're going to have hook specialist in the b so as far as things to do with post scores in this game, so let's talk about like hooks, fades, post hops, you know, all types of stuff like that. Post spins, drop steps, it's all looking pretty good for the most part. Now, for whatever reason, it's once again, still a very rare play style. I don't know why nobody ever wants to pick up on the post score stuff. I guess it's because it's toxic, quote unquote, and everybody hates on it in 2v2 and you know, it is what it is. Now, that doesn't stop you from doing it in 3v3, honestly. Now, what does stop you from doing it in 3v3 most times is because you need to be a really big player, you would at least think, right? I don't agree with that. I think 6'11s and 7 footers can still do really good in the post, whether it's hooks, fades, you 
you know, the dominant interior stuff with the post spins and drop steps. And you could even still be an athletic freak in, in that sense if you want to be a seven footer. So I don't think anything's stopping anybody from doing it other than that they don't want to be called weird, I guess. And, you know, their pride, quote unquote. But I don't think you should look at post scoring as a lack of pride, in my opinion. If you're doing it on a court that's not related to make it, take it. Like if you're on the threes, if you're on pro-am with it, in my opinion, there's nothing toxic about it. At the end of the day, if the other team can't get an efficient two better than you and they can't get threes up at a good rate and they're not able to keep up with your efficiency of twos, that's their problem if it's 3v3, in my opinion. Or if they can't stop you because it's not like post scoring is unstoppable in this game either. So anyway, for I know I'm getting on with this too long. So let's just put all the post badges where I believe they belong. So we have Dream Shake also in the B tier. We'll get into this in just a second too because it's kind of interesting to be honest with you. We have Drop Stepper in the A tier. Drop steppers are looking like drop steps are looking really nice. Post spin is also in the A tier, and that'll do it for our post related badges. So, to talk about all of them all at the same time post spin and drop step, they're both looking really good in terms of creating a lot of space off of obviously like. People have to play off of you if they're if you have elite level of post spin technician because if you have it on Hall of Fame, if you play too tight on that guy that has that badge on Hall of Fame, you're going to be absolutely just suction cup into those crazy ankle breaker type animations where you're just putting them on the floor with like the post spin. And then same goes for drop stepper. It's hard to play tight on people down low and get ready to play those hands up situations because you'll just get kind of shrugged off with drop steps. And then per usual, if you're sagging off on them because you don't want to make body contact because of these two badges, then you have things like dream shake where you can just fake a little hook here and there and boom, it'll just boost your shot percentage on a post hook or a post fade, whatever the case may be, or even a post top for that matter. And Everything to do with post scoring in this game is looking really, really good, in my opinion. If you're a lock, if you're a post scorer, if you're a shot creator, all three of those play styles are eating in this game like crazy. And even layup guys as well, I guess, to be fair. So anyway, all that stuff related, like Dream Shake again, boost your shot off a of fake. Hook Specialist is obviously doing good with the post hooks, drop stepper and post spin. They're all pretty self-explanatory badges, but I just wanted to give my, you know, my take on them per, per se. And again, I think you can absolutely get this done at 6'11", 7 foot, 6'10", even if you wanted to as well. Also, if you guys didn't know, I'm pairing up with the NBA 2K Lab this year. So you can use code Laker for 20% off at checkout at their website. That's NBA2KLab.com. On this website is all types of really good statistical jump shot information. You can also test the jumpers on their website too. Plug the controller straight into your phone or to your PC. You can get early, green, late. It'll tell you where you need to adjust on that jump shot. Or if you don't know what jumper you want to run, you just go to their jump shot recommender. You punch in your height, the jump shot rating that you're working with. And then based on the milliseconds of timing that you get, it'll recommend you a jump shot so again if you want to use code laker for 20 percent off at checkout that's nba2klab.com appreciate you guys and we'll get back to the video but anyway moving along we have posterizer posterizer is going to be in the b tier so this is about the lowest i've ever had poster in any video most likely it's usually always an a tier generally finds its way into the s tier in previous games as well but with the way dunk metering in this game just works and the fact that driving dunk in my opinion does not feel functionally good not to mention, I don't know if you guys have heard, but when it comes to your driving dunk meters, the size of it on the interior defense, I might have already mentioned this in the Twitter Twitter video, but the size of your dunk meter does not change anything between the level of interior defense. So 25 interior defense is 99. The dunk meter size doesn't change at all. It explains a lot about my clip that I posted on Twitter the other day too of how I was going at someone who was like 6'6 with 25 strength, 25 vert, or not 25 vert, it was like 50 vert. 25 interior defense and 25 block though and no interior deep related badges at all obviously and bro was just hanging out and making it the smallest meter in the world for being a paint sitter i mean it's so bad bro it's ridiculous but in terms of what just post riser is capable of obviously x button dunks you know they're still somewhat functional not to mention as far as getting contact alley-oops because those as we'll mention with aerial wizard in a little bit are actually insane like through the roof like contact lobs are looking real devious in this game I'm sure some of you have seen as well, but yeah, anyway, post riser beats here for that reason of the contact alleys and it just like, it's obviously going to help you still with X button dunks and as bad as dunk meter is functionally, it obviously still helps you with getting contact dunks through the dunk meter. So that's why we have it chilling in the B tier. Moving along to our next badge, we have Bulldozer coming at the A tier. This is a high A tier badge, in my opinion. It's not S. I think S should be reserved for like dominant, like game breaking badges. Like in the defensive one, we showed Glove and the Movable Enforcer. Those two can win you a game just off the fact that you have those badges. 
I will say Bulldozer contributes to that. Like I saw my boy Neff with Bulldozer going crazy with a 96 strength on a ball handler in the five out. And it was pretty insane, bro. Like you can definitely maneuver some crazy layups with this. However, I will say sometimes those layups are functionally not the greatest in fives. Like if, if in terms of rec center and like pro-am, it, it'll slow down quite a bit. Like when you get those shoulder chuck, crazy, like toss the dude completely out of the way animations, generally the help defender can kind of come in and, and play a really good contest or block on that. So if you're playing in a more condensed or like I should say less people on the court type game mode, like ones, twos, threes, Bulldozer is extremely effective and really, really good. When you get on fives though, I would move it more down to like a B tier in my opinion. It's just so slow in terms of some of those animations that you get and it can be reacted to very easily by an off ball defender. And if you don't have some crazy level of bailout to overcome that and you know, transition out of that layup attempt into a pass, I think you're gonna be in for a hard time trying to abuse the game with Bulldozer. So I have it in the A tier, it's a very good badge, but just keep that in mind. Now speaking of an A tier badge that's annoying to deal with, but it's more in the pro-am sense, is gonna be Whistle. So Whistle, I again, don't wanna sound like a too big of a complainer here, but I already thought the fouls were pretty crazy in last year's game. Like the people that would just go in for a dunk attempt on fives and just get bailed out by a, by a foul, in my opinion, when it was a terrible take because, you know, they're going for a terrible layup or a terrible dunk. And instead of getting a terrible layup or terrible dunk like they're supposed to be doing, in my opinion, in a video game, then you're looking at a situation where they're just getting bailed out with a foul and then they get free throws. Free throws gives crazy amount of takeover in comparison to anything else in the game. At least that's how it was last year. And yeah, now we got a whole badge designed for it and people can come out here with gold or Hall of Fame whistle and you know have crazy high three point rating. That's the crazier thing too is that you can get this through three point rating, but then it'll still function in the same way for your drive attempts. So that's like wild. Same goes the other way where you can get it like through your driving dunk or driving layup rating and then get like crazy foul calls on like pump fakes on the three point and stuff like that. I haven't seen that one quite as much. It's been a lot more to do with in the paint, but Either way, I'm not a big fan of Whistle being a good badge, but here we are in the A tier because it is go a good badge and it's extremely annoying to deal with. Anyway, moving along, we have a couple layup slash dunk oriented badges here. So we have Spin Cycle, Bunny, and Two Step. All of the gather type moves between the Euro spins and hops as far as those gathers. So all of these are pretty functionally decent in my opinion. Like none of them are game breaking. I've tested out a lot of different layup packages and I'm sure I'll get into that video because I know a lot of you guys look to me for stuff like that of the, I think it's called I tested every layup in the game so you don't have to in 2K23, 4, all those games, obviously. So we're going to be getting to that eventually, but obviously me testing layups for eight hours in one day is not exactly something I want to do just yet. <laughs> I'll put it like that. So I will say between like Joel Embiid at 79 driving layup, you get some really good ones for the bigs. I've seen DeMar DeRozan, I believe is 81 driving lay and with the with the two-step Euros, Euros and stuff like that, it looks insane on the Euros. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of different layup packages between like Zion even as well has some did some decent gathers between the hop spins and euros But I definitely still want to continue to do some testing either way though A lot of these gathers are very good at like creating space I think like they I'm not positive on this But I think they do speed up the animations the higher the badges and also obviously the more like gather distance you get and also the very obvious thing they do is you connect on like dunk and layup attempts on them a whole lot more. So you, the effectiveness of like the shot going in or, you know, the dunk triggering is just more up there in my opinion when it comes to the spin cycle bunny and two step all being upgraded on your build. And you get them all pretty cheap too. Like generally you can get a lot of these on gold very easily and get them on hall of fame. Besides, I think bunny is the harder one to get because they make euros and spins a little bit more achievable on the Hall of Fame level. Whereas Bunny, I think is a little bit higher on driving dunk. But either way, they're all very effective and I don't think they belong any higher than B tier though. All right, so moving along to the standing lay, standing dunk kind of family here, we have fast twitch and rise up. So fast twitch obviously deals with both, rise up is only for standing dunks. Now let's talk about rise up real quick. Standing dunk contact dunk meters are insane. Like the dunk meter on standing dunks is absolutely through the roof, especially in comparison to the driving dunk. Now here's the problem though. I've already told you guys about this bug as well, where the, the standing dunk meter size is based on your driving dunk rating. It's so bad. So I would normally vouch for rise up being in the S tier. I would call it an S tier badge. But the fact that you can't fully utilize it's like true unbelievable ability on the standing dunk power unless you have a high driving dunk kind of holds it back in my opinion like 
If you pair that with the 89 driving dunk, 90 standing dunk like my 7-footer has on the dot, it's a very functionally great thing. Not to mention they'll probably patch it eventually and obviously make it so your standing dunk meter size is based on your standing dunk meter rating. But for right now, it, I can't vouch for it being in the S tier just because it's tied to the fact that you need to have driving dunk too. And at that point, is it really just the badge putting in that work if you can't even t standing dunk meter with only standing dunk upgraded? That's just my take on it. So rise up and standing dunk meters are insane, but just keep in mind that the driving dunk also plays a factor. So on top of that, we have fast twitch, which is going to help you with those standing dunk meter attempts and just standing dunks in general, or obviously to do with helping you mash a little bit, which you're going to need them for on pick and roll in this game as well. So fast twitch, if you're a popper, you probably have around bronze or silver. If you're an inside, I would very likely bet you probably have it on silver, but it's possible you went with that 92 standing dunk to get it on gold. Not many people are coming out here with Hall of Fame Fast Twitch though. And same goes for Rise Up or really any other Hall of Fame badge for the most part that are 96 plus requirements because a lot of them are pretty bad in this game if we're being completely honest. But anyway, as far as what Fast Twitch is going to be doing for you, again, mashing is not very easy. We've already kind of talked about it with Masher of the whole like not many people are mashable in this game. Like you're not going to find many 6, 7 like back end like paint defenders or anything like that. Or if you're playing ranked rec center anything like that generally people are coming in with 610 plus centers so you know it's generally just like that it's hard to mash and it's hard to go with anything that's going to go crazy with that like pretty much this is how it goes you're going to catch it on a pick and roll you're going to be below the basket and you want to go up with uh, with it as quickly as possible most times people are going to be trailing you trying to go for a chase down you might be able to pump fake them one time and they'll go for the chase down then you just get a easy standing lay easy standing dunk and faster which will help you with that as well and stop them from going for a, like a like a second jump pogo type thing but when you get into that little mash battle, you do not want these people like being able to just sit down there below with, below the basket with you and be in that pump fake contest because it's not going to work. They are going to be able to play hands up defense very viably in this game and they're not going for that pump fake BS like they did in previous years. And that's just how it is. So I'm telling you guys this much. I think it's very valuable in terms of the pick and roll and to be able to standing dunk quickly or standing layup quickly or to be able to at least be a threat of them knowing that you have to go up to it quickly and they'll go for that chase down and then you might be able to get them with one pump fake, go straight up. Simple as that. But the whole like pump, pump, pump and just hope that they're going to jump on one of them and finally go up with it, that is not a thing in like, you know, how it was in previous years. So anyway. Moving along to our next badge, we have Slithery, and I'm going to be very unfortunately putting this in the B tier as well. So, as far as what this is going to be doing for you, I was hoping it made your dunk meters bigger, and I guess to be fair, debatably, it might help with the contested contact dunk meters. I, I feel like when I've had this on a high level, those dunk meters of getting a contact dunk rather than like an open or something, right, have been a little bit bigger, but... Can I vouch for that as the entirety of the badge? No, not at all. So what it also does for you is it's going to help you on those gathers a little bit here and there. But again, I can't really vouch for that entirely either. Like I can't sit here and tell you just because the badge is lighting up. And I know that's what some of you guys are going to say is like, oh, well, when I do euros, spins and hops, my slithery pops up every single time. I can't vouch for the fact that that's helping you a ton in those aspects every single time. Same way that Slithery doesn't pop up on contact dunks, but I still feel its presence as far as like it making those dunk meters a little bit bigger in my opinion. So I don't know, man, it's a really hard thing to judge and gauge. And if I had to be completely honest with you guys, I don't know where Slithery is supposed to rank to be real with you guys. So. I guess I'm, I'm more so putting it in B to be safe, but it's kind of a hard thing. I guess if you guys really wanted me to, because what I'm going to do eventually, and I'll just expose it right now, Giant Slayer, I was going to like literally put as I don't know badge. So I was going to throw it down here or like somewhere because I have no idea what Giant Slayer's power is or anything like that or like what it does. So <laughs> I don't know. I guess let's just do it for safety measures. I'm not sure what these two badges do. Like, I know Giant Slayer, obviously, if you're a smaller player and you're going at a bigger defender, it's hypothetically going to make your layups go in at a better rate. But I don't know how much better in this game. I haven't seen, like, little tiny point guards, like six ones or anything like that, hardly prospering at all in this game. The only court you can ever find them in is Comp Pro-Am or anything like that. And those dudes are having the worst time of their life right now, bro. It's <laughs> They're having a, such a hard time. Small guards are not having a great time in this game. Sometimes you'll see it in 3v3, like a comp 3v3 setting, but you have to be a really good player to take advantage of this small guard stuff. So I haven't seen enough like experience with people going with like a contested layup that somehow I just don't block or anything like that. And if it is something like that, let me tell you, bro, 
things like fearless and float game are going way harder for that or scooper to be a quick efficient like layup style player so obviously like uh, we have four different layup package lay actually five of these are layup related now remaining right here so all of them are significantly better than giant slayer as far as what i've seen but again i don't know because i haven't seen a lot of small players out there same with like I said, Slithery, I have no clue what it does yet. So if you guys want to give any context or give your opinions on those two badges, feel free to leave it in the comments. Your your opinion is as good as mine as far as that stuff goes. And I'm willing to admit that as someone that I like to give true guidance and, and true opinions to with you guys in these videos. So I don't want to just spew some BS and be like, <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. So <laughs> believe me, even though I'm just completely spitting it and not having any idea what it actually does. So I hope you can respect that at least. All right, so moving along, we have a couple layup badges that we just mentioned coming in at the C tier and B tier. So we have Scooper in the B. This is gonna be really good for quick, efficient layups. It's about as simple as that. You wanna hold on your right stick with no sprint toward the ball hand, or you can sometimes do it to the off hand as well. It's It's been always a functionally good type of mechanic to do in the game. We've seen Ticino do stuff like this in years past, and now obviously a whole badge being related to it is very helpful in terms of that play style. Acrobat though, I gotta say, maybe this is just a me thing. It's also very possible that that's a thing, but I don't feel like it's easy to time acrobat layups in this game. The fact that layup timing being on is very, very like suggested, and I agree with it as well. Layup timing being on and your meter being on or off, whether that's up to you, it feels very like extreme power, right? Like layups feel extremely good as long as you can time them. But with acrobatic layups, that's my problem. When you cancel a layup animation and like try and do the acrobat part of it, I don't see you being able to time the layup anymore like it feels very broken in terms of its functionality now you guys can let me know if you're a way more experienced layup player than me because i haven't been going super crazy with the layups or anything like that in this game but that's my like take on it that's what i've seen so far is that it's very hard to hit that little cancel where if you're going up for a layup but then you're like nope i'm gonna switch it up and i'm gonna hit x again instead i, I have no idea how to time those layups now maybe it's possible that you have to you know hold your x button go for that layup whatever style you want it to do then when you do the x button again to switch up you have to like hold it again to time it but i haven't seen that be the case either so to me acrobat it's obviously like the acrobatic layups have potential and if you have your layup timing off <laughs> they actually probably could be crazy but as far as like being able to do them and like having the layup timing on it doesn't feel functionally like correct in terms of having them both in that same aspect but Anyway, again, Scooper, it feels very good in terms of like, it's easy to time, it's very easy to get off. If you, it's like the anti chase down layup, if you will, where if you got someone beat, you can just go ahead and hit a little scoop and boom, it'll be the fastest, quickest, most efficient thing you can do. So if you don't have dunk on your build, Scooper is very friendly to being a fast, quick layup animation that will have a good rate of going in as well. You just have to have the badge pretty high. But moving along, we have Aerial Wizard. Now, you won't believe me putting this in the A tier. If, if you've seen previous tier list videos or anything like that, <laughs> you would be rattled at Aerial Wizard being in the A tier. But contact alley-oops and just lobs in general are extremely good in this game. And Aerial Wizard deserves a lot of credit for it. I haven't seen builds that have like mediocre driving dunk ability be able to do what a high driving dunk can do with Aerial Wizard as well. So... On my 97 driving dunk build that has Hoff Aerial Wizard, it's got, you know, all the contact lob packages, all the dunk packages, everything like that. It feels dominant in pick and roll game off the fact that it's fast and it can get to those contact lobs at an insane rate compared to my seven footer that only has 89 driving dunk and doesn't have all of those contact lobs and only has like gold Aerial Wizard. It feels dominant to have Aerial Wizard at a high level. And it's a problem guarding it in the pick and roll because there's not much you can do about it. It's like the most broken contact dunk aspect of this game is getting him in the contact lobs. So I gotta say, Aerial Wizard feels very overpowered in terms of it being an A tier. I won't like argue it being way above any of these other A tiers because they're also very good, but Aerial Wizard deserves to be above a lot of these Bs. I'm gonna be completely honest. Like it's better than Posterizer. It's a crazy thing for me to say that, but <laughs> it's just the truth. It, it's unfortunate. Anyway, moving along, we have Pro Touch also coming in at the A tier. This is a very good badge. And, and the way that this game plays in terms of like layups being super necessary and even like helping you for the close shot matches as well. And just the fact that standing layups can be very doable even with 65 close shot as long as you have Pro Touch on a high level through your driving layup. Honestly, it feels like a great A tier badge. And again, layups have been insane in this game. And obviously, I, I'd be very wrong to put Pro Touch anything less than A tier in, in this type of game. Everything funnels through this badge. 
right here. Whether it's floaters, scoops, the the hop spins and lay in euros on the gathers and stuff like that. Everything funnels through Pro Touch and the layup timing being on. So it's got to be a top tier badge. You could argue this is an S tier. <laughs> I'm gonna be real, but unfortunately we're not gonna do that. And moving into the, the rest of the badges that we have right here, we are loading this A tier up, as you can see. And I'm going to have to resize them, so let me go and do that real quick. All right, so we don't have anything coming in, in the S tier when it comes to finishing, but a ton of A tiers. So the ones that we added right here were Fearless and Float Game. So they're definitely top of the A tier as well. But as we just mentioned with Pro Touch, this is one of the most dominant badges in the game because everything funnels through it. Once again, same thing goes for Fearless. I mean, like, this is going to lower contest. It's literally your blinders and, and dead eye when it comes to layups. <laughs> That's just how it is. And float game is like your absolutely uncontestable layups in this game. Like if you throw a floater up on someone because you beat someone, like let's say you caught the ball in the corner, you ran past him. Now you're running straight at the center who's in the paint. And obviously driving dunks and dunk meter are freaking terrible in this game. So don't even try testing him with that. But you know what's going to be uncontestable and unstoppable is your floater. <laughs> if you have a floater in your bag, you are going to float that thing straight over that center. And it's going to be open almost every single time. Good luck blocking it too. I've come close sometimes with my seven footer to blocking a floater that I'm like flying at. Like I'm sprinting to that thing because I see my corner defender get beat. And then I'm flying over there from the paint. Hold that wide button like I always do ready to swat that chase down or like you know the aggressive block attempt and I barely miss it and it's an open every single time even though I'm getting my hand right next to where the ball is because obviously you're releasing it very quickly so it's like very realistic in terms of real life I'm not here to hate on layup game at all I very much so hope layup game stays good as is it could use a little bit of a nerf if we're being completely honest but obviously i do hope that dunk game gets a little bit buffed i mean it's pretty sad to see like posterizer and, and slithery and stuff like that and and just a lot of the badges that i thought were gonna be extremely good like precision dunker as well all really toward the bottom of the list and like some don't even work some i don't know what the heck do because they don't really pop up on my dunk attempts and some are just mid so it's unfortunate that it is as it is but I, again i have a lot of badges right here in the a tier b tier and don't think I'm doing this in terms of like trying to save myself from like, you know, critique or criticism or anything like that. This is how I truly feel about all the badges. Like if if I felt that Pro Touch or Fearless or Float Game belonged in the S tier, I'd put them there. They are very good badges. Same with Drop Stepper, Post Spin, Bulldozer, all that stuff. But they're not on the same level as a lot of the S tier badges I'm going to be giving in this game. Like for instance, Glove and Immovable Enforcer. Those are badges that you strictly have on your build. You can win a game just because of them right now and plucks are unbelievably broken immovable enforcer is probably in a good spot like that's a good s tier badge to have in my opinion i think it's good that like big builds can get bumpy with good strength and it's good that we have strength balance again same goes for bulldozer too but yeah glove is for the third launch in a row pretty broken if we're being honest but i don't know i, I hate to be the guy that's gonna sit here and say like patch glove 2k because uh, you know i mean i've done it two years in a row and I feel like every year I'm getting people's pure lock builds completely destroyed and it's like useless to run anymore because they just completely patch it into the ground you know same way I'm feeling with the dunk meter stuff right now so I don't know I don't I don't want to like try and like preach nerf this guy's build you know all over the place 24 7 but yeah glove is looking pretty dominant and if you guys want to check out that defensive badge tier list video and see the S tiers and what's all left in the A and B and C in that, feel free to. But again, not many badges in this game are functionally terrible. It's just, again, like Slithery and Giant Slayer, I'm not sure what do, and Precision Dunker doesn't even actually work. Everything else, though, they all feel pretty functional and like decent, and anything that's in the B tier is probably like lower. Anything that's in, in the A tier is definitely like superior. So I apologize for there not being a ton of discrepancy in terms of like stretching it out through the S into the C, into the D, and into the E tier in this video, but that's how I truly feel. I feel like a lot of these badges are kind of all tied together in a sense of the same power level, if you ask me. So anyway, that's all for video. If you guys did enjoy, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new to channel, noties, all that good stuff, and like always, try this one in 2,000 likes. If you to the end of the video, put post, put dunk, or put lay in the comments, so it supports me all the way through. Whatever play style you are preaching for in this game, or whatever you're hopeful for, <laughs> if you happen to be a dunker. So. Anyway, that's all video. If you guys want to stay tuned for the shooting and playmaking, I'll probably do that in the next couple of videos. Obviously, me though, I haven't shot the ball in this game very much. I've only like played on shooting builds like one or two times so far. So I don't know. I, we'll see if I even do the shooting video, to be honest with you guys, because I don't like when obviously I'm coming out there with opinions that aren't even my own, or at least if I'm only giving opinions purely based off of my 
third person perspective experience where I'm just talking about what I've seen from other people or my teammates. So I don't know. We'll see if I do the shooting this this season or not. But I'll definitely have the playmaking pretty soon as well. So stay tuned for that. And other than that, take it easy, man. Peace.